Here's the 1979 Zenith System 3 circuit board. I removed it out of the cabinet and I noticed that on this electrolytic capacitor there was a bad solder joint. Let's take a look at the bottom side of the circuit board. Here's the bad solder joint at the capacitor. Not sure what caused this. Looks like there was some arcing there. We may end up needing a new capacitor, but I'm going to go ahead and try resoldering this old one and see if it'll work. I'm going to check the board for other bad solder joints, like maybe at the flyback, or other points where there are large components, heavy components, or things which might produce heat. I'm going to resolder that and then we'll see how that works. Now I resoldered the connection and I added a piece of wire just for a make sure I got an extra good connection in case the trace on the circuit board had burned. I resoldered the flyback joints too. Now I'm ready to reinstall this back in the cabinet. Now I've got the chassis put back into the uh, cabinet here. I'm going to discharge the CRT before I hook up the high voltage lead just to make sure that the CRT didn't reaccumulate a charge got a little bit of a spark there. You might not have been able to see it on the camera. But you always need to discharge first before you remove the high voltage lead and when you reinstall because the CRT can reaccumulate a charge. You just got an alligator clip lead hooked up to the CRT grounding terminal which contacts the outer shell of the CRT and then just use a screwdriver connected to the alligator clip to discharge. ready to hook back up. So I'll get that, get the high voltage lead put back on and get the ground connections put back on and I'll be ready to test. Well I think that fixed it. We now have a normal sized raster and no hum bars on the side of the picture. So now I just got to rewire the power cord. I got it hooked up with an alligator clip cord now because the uh, old power cord had been spliced, so I'm going to redo the splice job uh, and solder it and uh, use heat shrink tubing on it. And I'll go ahead and take it out to the, or I can get it hooked up to the DTV converter. We can check the actual picture performance. I'm now going to use the degaussing coil on it. It seems to have, there's a little bit of uh, magnetic uh, error in there given some little bit of a shadow, a little bit of a tint of the picture. There was some more. I used the degausser earlier. I'm going to go ahead and give it another try here. I'm just slowly move it around the CRT. Go around the top too. Go around the sides. What you need to do is to remove it slowly because the magnetic field penetrates for a while and if you were to if you were to shut it off right near it you'd end up with a magnetized CRT so you have to move it a, at least four or five feet away before shutting it off. So now I'm going to go take it out and I'll test it. Uh, I was able to get the uh, TV cable hooked up here in the workshop. I've got one hooked up to the Lyceum TV, but I got the splitter and hooked up another cable. So give the Zenith now a test. Here's the remote control. Ultrasonic. There's how the tuning motor works. Of course, we'll only get, uh, only use one channel with the DTV unit. It's just the volume here. And our turning chain is a little different this time. Because we're doing a row of double crochet, we're going to need to do a chain three for our turning, turning chain because that gives us a high, approximate mute. height. 
then on this row, and for this example, I Let's decrease the volume down. A double crochet two together, which means you do all the steps. The cover on this remote control is a little bit loose. It's really got a good sharp picture. I adjusted the focus to improve the sharpness. Insert your hook in the CRT is still very good. Pull through two. Normally we would do pull through two, pull through two. You do that, then yarn Here's over, the insert your hook panel. in the next stitch. You can see yarn it, over, the channel knob rotating when two. I change the channels. Now that last step of That again, yarn over, insert your hook, pull through, pull through two, hold on to that last step. One and second. the console yarn models would have the auxiliary hook, controls two. down at the bottom there. <coughs> Looks like All it might three. need a little bit of fine okay. tuning on that One channel. More. But this uh, portable pull has the auxiliary two. controls up here. Pull through two, and then pull through all three. Now, going forward to show you how you can shape with uh, increases and decreases. Notice on this diamond shape, in the very beginning here, I increase uh, on each edge of every row. And by increasing just on the edges, you create this wider shape going forward.